Well, hello, hello, my dear friends, my dear viewers. Welcome back once again, this time around, for this week's chapter, the first weekly One Piece chapter that I cover in this triumphant, sort of, return of mine. And what a chapter to start on, 970. Odin versus Kaido. And as I usually say, the clues in the name, this chapter is... It was good. I'm not gonna say it's bad. Uh, me saying this, like, with this tone makes it sound like it's it was not a good chapter. Au contraire, as the French would say. Um, it was a very cool chapter. But, in the grand scheme of things... We were expecting this chapter, so everything that happened here, almost everything that happened here, was more or less expected. Like, we knew that Odin and the Scabbards had to lose. So, and I think for me the problem is the way in which we did not see the the, the 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 total fight like the the whole fight that's what I would have liked to see but let me go through and give my opinions on some of, on some of the things uh, one thing that I really really enjoyed and this is jumping the gun a bit but one thing I really enjoyed was the fact was how they lost how they lost was assured and Near the end of the chapter, we have that, for me, amazing scene with the with Higurashi, with the old hag, transforming herself into into Momonosuke, so that Odin would be distracted and then Kaido could clobber him in the head. Like, it's such a very simple scene, and if we really think about it, it was expected. Like. From the moment that someone with uh, the Mane Mane no Mi is on the scene, we can expect all kinds of things. Like, we start questioning everything, and the moment I saw Momonosuke being handled by that Beast Pirate guy, I was like, okay, this is not him. It can't be him. There, there's no way. Because we just saw... The, we just saw Yasuye in Kuri, in Odin's castle. But then again, things could have changed. We don't know how long it took them to go from Kuri to, in this case, Udon, because this is happening in Udon. So, and since Kaido mentioned the traitor or the spy, you know, but, but yeah, I when I saw this, I was like, this can't be Momo. And then... Just down the line, it it shows that it's not Momo, it's indeed Higurashi. So, this scene was both, you know, surprising. Because, oh my god, the length that the Beast Pirates are willing to go. But then again, once I thought it out, I was like, yeah, sure, sure they would do that. They are the Beast Pirates. They fooled Odin into five years of ridiculousness. Just because they felt they weren't strong enough to take him on. So, <laughs> they, can, they will do something like that. But let's roll back to just something I wanted to tell you guys at first. The cover page, meh, it's okay. Gang badges of my family, as it's called, volume 19. Badgy and V2 are immobilized. After Goatee getting his ass kicked by that marine, meh, I, uh, I don't even know, I... I was not, I'm not expecting anything really about this cover page. I don't even know where this is going. Uh, they're still in Dress Rosa, obviously. And uh, honestly, I don't know if they're gonna get out of Dress Rosa. I mean, I mean, not uh, by getting out. I mean, getting out anytime soon. Because I mean, I think this cover page could very well take place during Dress Rosa, uh, in Dress Rosa, during Dress Rosa. <laughs> it makes it sound like it's during the Dress Rosa arc, but no. Um, 
take place in the red room. So, so yeah, it's it's meh. This 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 week's cover page is it's meh. So okay, uh, interesting detail that I just noticed when I was uh, starting this this chapter again. Of the three ladies playing the um, the biwa, yes, the the biwa, we see the the shorter one is the same lady that taught Robin how to how to courtesan, <laughs> I guess. So yeah, we can see that she was already quite old at this stage, and twenty some twenty years later, she's still kicking about. Well. It's 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 normal because old people in One Piece are just eternal sometimes. So yeah, we we have Doctor Kureha kicking them out for about like what, 130, 140, a mere 140, I might add. But yeah, we see the March of the Scabbards, which is which was such a good ending for last chapter. I mean, going back a bit, that ending has straight up. Our long park march vibes. The moment I saw that scene, I was like, overtaken. Overtaken. I just, I, I imagined the scene in my head with the soundtrack. But I digress. We then see Yasue and a few of his followers right, uh, galloping along to an, as of yet, unknown location. Wh I'm gonna be honest, when I read this, I thought that for some reason, they were going to join the battle. Like, because his expression kinda looked to me like, okay, he found out that they're going, and he's going there to like, no, stop, don't do that, or just, that guy, he went alone, we need to help him, he can't do it alone. That was my initial thought. But as the chapter rolls along, we really see that it's not that. Um, we got a cute scene with Toki, Hiyori, and Momonosuke in the mansion. Uh, that's okay. We get a pan of a few areas of, um, of Wano. We have the flower capital and um, Ringo. Is it the, the snow-covered area that, um, that Ryuma's shrine is in? Ringo, I think. Okay. And then we get to the, to the big... To the big point, which appeared kind of out of nowhere for me. I, when I first read this, I thought that there was a, a, a missing panel here. But I realize now that the smaller panel, which is Odin's eye, makes up for it. Because they get to a point where they see Kaido and their forces. Which is really funny if you think about it, because... When we get that big pan out with Kaido as a dragon, you would figure that they would have seen that from quite a long while ago. Because it's Kaido. Sure, I mean, there have been, there have been some size comparisons saying that Kaido nowadays is much longer than the Kaido then, which can make sense. I, I believe that can make sense. But I mean, still, it's a freaking dragon. I mean, unless he was, like, sniveled around the rock, because he's, he's kind of perched atop a rock and, and elongated along it, unless he was, like, covering it me, like, whoa, ro, 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 they'll never see me here. And then when, when they arrive, he's like, ha-ha, it is I, Kaido, the beast, and you did not see me here. And I don't know why I'm starting to turn into a sort of, I don't know, Italian accent. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, okay. I, I, I get it. I get it that they didn't want to do a lot of preparation. Like, I'm expecting the anime to do something like a close-up shot of each scabbard's face two times. Because, you know, the anime can't do anything less from them two times. So... Uh, dramatical pan in the character's face times two with some bang bang going on in the background but you know so yeah and there's banter going back and forth from Kaido to Odin Kaido drops a very interesting 
a very interesting sentence. Perhaps I have a spy in your castle. I imagine that the conspiracy theorists of our community have already been hard at work reviving the fires of their traitor theories. Um, I might do something on that, I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on that. It's not really apparent, at least for me. I'll try to read... I'll try to read Wano from the beginning and try... I have an idea of what it might be, but this is a very far-fetched idea. It has to do with Queen and uh, possible bug technology. But yes, it's very far-fetched. And I don't know. We'll have... I'll, I'll have to think about it. I'll have to write it down. Compare it to, to the early chapters. And maybe, maybe, maybe there's a possibility. Because if, in my idea, thinking about a person as a traitor, there really isn't anyone that demonstrated... There wasn't any small panel showing, showing a shadow doing something or telling something to someone. There wasn't really that. So... There wasn't a shadow that we could think, oh, that's Kawamatsu, oh, that's Denjiro, or, you know, any of the scabbards, as people tend to to think. Most people I see think it's either Raizo or Kanjuro. I don't know. I saw some people saying Shinobu, but then again, after this chapter, Shinobu is, is out of the game, really. Shinobu... Shinobu redeemed herself from those thoughts. Like, not that she had anything to redeem herself, attention, but she redeemed herself of our thoughts of her being a traitor, if I make any sense. But I don't know. I think that if it was for us to think that there was a traitor in this flashback, we would have seen something, some indication that there's someone that was a traitor. I think we can safely rule out like some big names from being the Mane Mane no Mi user. I actually thought about that, of one of the scabbards being impersonated by her, but at the end of this chapter we see that all the scabbards are locked away. So unless Igarashi quickly turned into Momo and then back to scabbard again so that she could be arrested, but then it makes, but then it makes the it begs the question as to, she had to die. So if she was indeed posing as one of the scabbards, one of the scabbards nowadays hasn't told who he who he was. I guess we can put Denjiro up on that because he's the only scabbard that is yet to appear. So maybe the old lady was posing as Denjiro. And then she quickly turned into Momo and then back to Denjiro again. We don't know. She just kind of popped up in the middle of the chapter and then never to be seen again. So it could be possible that she was posing as Denjiro and that Denjiro is either missing or dead. I don't think he's dead. Uh, in fact, much like many others, many others in the community, I think that Denjiro is the witching hour boy. So, yeah, we'll see. This whole traitor shenanigan just keeps... Fuel keeps being added to the pyre, but it's not concrete uh, fuel. So, it's something that we really have to dig up in order to understand, which we might never be able to understand unless until Oda just comes and says, this was the traitor all, all along. Surprise, surprise. And so we'll see. So we have the confirmation that Kaido was indeed, had indeed lied to Odin five years ago. Because, surprise, surprise, and this was really surprising to me, he thought they, they were at the disadvantage. So, yeah. This whole thing could have ended five years ago if only Odin had gone bananas back then. But then again, 
it's it's usually like this those pure of heart and those who want to do good for people all, always get in these kinds of situations and now Kaido has a massive army of a thousand men against I mean I say a thousand but if we're counting Kaido king and queen it's only 997 because Kaido king and queen are on a different league as we've seen from this from this chapter so so yeah there's banter back and forth Kaido insults him from for being a fool who chose to dance yeah and Odin very manly says, I stand by my decision that day. Let us speak of the future now. And it just draws Enma right off the bat. No questions asked. Let's go. And we see Kinemon Denjiro and all of them getting ready. And Odin just charges into battle and all the scabbards fall behind him. And it's glorious. Like, it's glorious. My only regret is that this panel... When we see the scabbards, when you see like Kinemon and Denjiro back to back, we see Kanjiro and Kiku and Raizo and Nekomamushi. My only regret that this panel is not bigger. <laughs> because I would love to see the ensemble of the nine scabbards just marching into battle. But as I as I said before, I think the anime will stretch this out. When we will eventually get there, which is crazy to think that we will eventually get to this flashback. This flashback is so mental, it's so nuts, that it's so amazing to think that one day we'll get there. So yeah, the Beast Pirates get all scaredy cats at the sight of the of the Scabbards and Odin. And, um, and yeah, we cut back and we see where Yasuye went. So we went to, to Odin's castle to protect Toki, uh, Hiyori and Momonosuke. And we see Hiyori giving a flying kick to Momo's face. So cute. And like her whole pose is just like her hands are... It looks like her hands are covered in gloves. and Because you don't see her fingers. And she has her little socks and she just goes... Bah! So cute. But yeah, so... Yasuye kind of predicts that if if Odin loses the battle, then the counter is done, and the country will be done. Uh, Toki's kind of like, I don't know, vacant. Her, her expression is very vacant. I don't know if, if it's vacant of the sort like, I don't want to think about it. My husband will win this fight, I'm not worried. Or if there's something else going on, like... Well, again, it's it's very complicated to pin some of these things because there's a lot of factors that don't play well here. There's a lot of things that are miss not missing, but we just can't see them because that's how all the do does things. So yeah, we keep we we come back to the battle and Shinobu appears, so yeah, this was the beginning when I thought, okay, Shinobu's not the traitor. And she's looking mighty fine, my Hayat. So Odin recognizes her from when she was little, and she was so cute, look at that. Um, is it, And another thing, is it only me, or is she looking a lot like Pudding when you just consider this one panel where she's happy that Odin recognizes her? I don't know, she just looks... A hell of a lot like pudding. I don't know if it's the if it's the side hair thing. I don't know. It's just she looks a hell of a lot like like pudding. So she explains the situation how Fukuro, uh, Fukuro Kujoku, damn these names, Fukuro Kujoku and the Kozuki Ninja Legion switched to to Orochi, but no, she remained faithful. She remained faithful and hopeful that one day Odin would return and Odin says something and Shinobu reacts to that in a very interesting way just cementing the fact that she knows what really happened he says I do not blame any who would lose faith in a fool of a lord this is very heavy because Odin is the type of man that carries his things very heavily whether be he whether be his successes 
for his failures, as he sees this as a failure. Um, but Shinobu reacts to it in a way that she's like... It's almost like she said, with, with that expression, she said, you're not a fool of a lord. Your decision was so much bigger than anyone knows. If, you, if only people knew what you have done, they would not have treated you that way. But she doesn't. So her expression says it all, and we still do not know what really happened. And so she joins 11 samurai venturing to battle, and we see king and queen fighting against them. We see the silhouettes, which is, which is very, very cool. Like, king has sort of a... I don't know, is that a bat? Or is that one of those swords like remember John and Yosako swords but a little thinner a little thinner than that uh, so yeah the battle went on we don't know for how exactly long the battle went but here is the big the big big point the point that makes this chapter Odin Nitorio Paradise Totsuka and yeah the 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 official release, the Viz release, decided to translate the the names. So I don't really like how they translate the names. I understand why. As a translation student, I understand why they translate the names. I just, I really don't like it. But yes, Odin Nitoryu Togen Totsuka, which translated would be something like... Ten Hand Peach's Paradise, Peach Tree's Paradise, something like that. It's, yeah, it's it's weird. And there's a reference to a, to a Divine Sword or something. So, yeah, this was the blow. This was the X marks the spot blow that Odin gave to Kaido. And you can really see the damage by the expression on Kaido's face. Like... This is not the expression one does when the sword just tickles. It, it really hurt. So he just tumbles to the floor and Odin goes to give it the final blow. And then the thing happens. Higurashi poses as Momo. Odin gets distracted. Kaido transforms. Boom. Mallet, mace to the head. Odin gets completely wrecked out of nowhere and yes Ashura Doji is struck by King man in the very he was struck like I don't know in, in the back neck in the, in the back of the neck it's really weird but I hope that this is setting up their fight in the future some people would argue that uh, Zoro would be the one to fight King as King is the right-hand man of, of Kaido. Uh, you know what? I would really like for Ashura Doji to be the one to face King. I think... Yeah, I think we need to see the scabbards in action. We've been promised that. We didn't see them in action these days. In these flashbacks. We need to see them in action. So... They either fight... Some of them either fight against the against the calamities, or the scabbards fight against the numbers. It's one or the other. But I would really like, I really love to see Ashura Doji facing king and someone else facing queen. I don't know who, but someone else face, facing queen. So yeah, uh, I wonder. I was thinking about this, because they fought in Udon. I wonder if the Udon factory where Luffy and Kid and Hyogoru and... Um, well, I guess she was already constructed because Hyogoru was already arrested. But uh, maybe, imagine if the Udon prison where they were at was actually constructed on this very same battlefield. That would be cool. It's just a small detail, but it would be cool. So, and yeah, they are, on, they are put under arrest in the flower capital in the very same manner that today the supporters of the Kozuki clan are. And we start to see Shinobu 
wandering around. But it's not like she ran away. She was freed because Odin very smartly said she was no vassal of, of his. And by that little stunt, with that little stunt, he bought himself, quote unquote, he bought himself someone on the outside to help. Like either to free them or to free them, sorry, <laughs> or to go and protect uh, Toki, Yori and Momo, like something. The point is they now have an ally on the outside. And in that very same panel we see, we see Kinemon and Denjiro on the ground tied down. Denjiro seems to be a little bit messed, a little bit roughed up. But yeah, and the sentence comes. And something I find very interesting in this very same alignment of panels, like we have the first one that announces the sentence. And then we have three panels, one of Toki, Hiyori and Momo, another one of Tsuru and another one of Yasuye. None of them know what's going on. Like, like I know it. I know news don't travel very fast in Wano, I think. But uh, Jesus, this is something big. Like this, you'd imagine that this were already being passed around to as many regions as possible. But no. So yeah, and the sentence is announced in the public in the public square. Three days hence, the ten wicked samurai are sentenced to be boiled. To death. Yes, the famous boiled to death sentence that we once thought was only applied to, to Odin was now applied to everyone. We discover that she was applied, the sentence was applied to everyone. So, uh, this is the end of the chapter. There is no chapter next week, sadly. The next chapter will hit February 16. Uh, it's a Sunday as, a, as well. Yes, it is a Sunday. So, yeah. Uh, this was one of those intermediary chapters that we knew had to happen because they had to lose. We got some epic moments. And now we're gearing up towards the end of the flashback. Next chapter, we will probably get the escape... Odin's uh, eventual demise. I don't know how the Nine Scabbards will be able to make it out. We know that at least nine of them make, at least eight of them, sorry, make it out. Because we know that Inu and Neku are alive. Kinemon, Kanjiro and Raizo we've, we've been with since uh, Dress, uh, since Punk Hazard, uh, Dress Rose, and Zo, Kiku and Kawamatsu and Ashura Doji we met in Wano. The only one that is unencountered for is really Denjiro. But I don't think Denjiro died. I mean, I know for we know for a fact that he didn't because Kinemon mentions him when they get back to the present. So, at least he didn't die here. However, yes, I'm very curious to see how they the nine of them will get away because yes before we thought i thought at least that the boil to death sentence was only applied to odin but eventually we discovered it was not so this was it this was 970 and um i mean i don't know like, I'm reading the comments here, and there's one saying that Toki is the traitor. Um, some say that Okiku, just because Odin left uh, Izo back. Nah. Otsuru? Who thinks Otsuru is the. Yeah, Denjiro. I can see Denjiro, but. Okay. Yeah, I don't know, like, I'm not gonna read anymore because people can get up to some crazy, crazy bananas in the comments. So yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. 
we'll have to see. I'll try to do some digging. I'll try to put some some hypotheses on the table and analyze them. I'll follow through with my idea and see if there's reason for it for it to be, which I'll probably doubt I'll find. But anyway, this video is long enough. I promised myself I tried to do like 30 minutes um, or less videos, but I guess I already blew this up because it's uh, 10 minus a quarter and well, yeah. So I will see you guys next Monday, if all goes well. I'll see you guys next Monday with probably a theory video or a, or I don't know, a, a discussion. We'll call it a discussion video on the, on the whole traitor thing. And we'll try to see if there's any plausible reason on why any of Odin's close circle could be the traitor. So, I will see you guys back then again. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have something to add, please do so in the comment section down below. She's yours to use and abuse within reason, of course. And I will see you guys next Monday. Bye-bye.